CBS Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Two of the NFL's young guns, Drew Bledsoe and Steve McNair. Super Bowl experienced and playoff tested. New England is hoping that Bledsoe can lead the Patriots to their third consecutive division title. McNair, Air McNair, Tennessee's double threat in the air, explosive on the run. It's a quarterback showdown on CBS. Foxborough Stadium, 30 miles south of downtown Boston, where today the Patriots face the Oilers for the first time since 1993 in front of a sellout crowd. Afternoon, everybody. Gus Johnson along with Steve Tasker. The New England Patriots feel that they have all the tools to not only make it to the Super Bowl, but to win it. And today, they want to send a message to Tennessee. Well, the Patriots acknowledge that they don't see the Oilers very often or the 46 defense that they run. But Drew Bledsoe told us on Friday that they want to create a long-lasting memory in the minds of the Oilers of what it is to play the Patriots. That's a confident statement, and this is a confident bunch. that they have. But they have struggled in the run game. Rookie Robert Edwards has not played well, but head coach Pete Carroll told told us he challenged his offensive line to step up and play more physically. He does not want Robert Edwards to blame himself for the lack of a running game. Tennessee, one and one. They struggled last week with their running game as well. Eddie George limited to 15 carries, only 11 yards, and they're looking for balance on offense. Well, the book on the Tennessee Oilers has been that if you take Eddie George away, Steve McNair doesn't have the weapons or the experience to beat you. After four years waiting for four years, head coach Jeff Fisher told us that he has finally gotten Steve McNair some weapons to balance his offense. Yancey Thigpen, Jackie Harris to compliment White, uh, White check at the tight ends, and also the first wide receiver taken in the 98 draft, Kevin Dyson. We'll see his first action as a pro here today. So Tennessee has won the toss. They will receive. We're underway from Foxborough. Mason five yards in his own end zone. Up to the 15 where he's taken down. Rather, he broke the tackle and gets up to the 22. Steve Lofton with the special teams tackle, a return of 24 yards. The quarterback for the Tennessee Oilers, Steve McNair, in his fourth year out of Alcorn State, the third overall pick in the 1995 draft. And according to him, his first year was last year as a starting quarterback. His numbers average, but according to Jeff Fisher, his head coach, he is the most improved player on this team. They want to take, the Patriots want to take Eddie George away right away. They want to see if Steve McNair can prove that he can win a game on his own. They, the Oilers want to run it just as many times as they want to pass it. First down from the 21 yard line. Play action on first down. McNair over the middle and he finds his tight end. That's Jackie Harris. Offensively for the Tennessee Oilers up front. Bruce Matthews, the left guard, he's been there 16 seasons and is headed for the Hall of Fame along with Hopkins, Long, Lehman, and Runyon. And the backs and receivers, Yancey Thigpen, two-time pro bowler with Pittsburgh, signs as a free agent here with Tennessee. He's the big play receiver. Second down and seven from the 24. Eddie George loses his footing. Chad Eaton there to stop him. Defensively for the Patriots, Willie McGinnis, last week against Indianapolis, a sack, a forced fumble. He only had two sacks a year ago, Thomas Eaton and Collins. The linebackers, very strong group. Chris Slay, pro bowler a season ago, had nine sacks. Ted Johnson in the middle of Todd Collins. And in the secondary, Ty Law, Chris Canty on the corners, along with Lawyer Malloy and Willie Clay. Third down and six from the 25-yard line. Yancey Thickpin in motion. Short drop, McNair underneath, and it's caught. Willie Anderson with the catch. Ty Law standing right on it. 
this Patriot defense really prides itself and we're kind of disappointed in themselves last week against the Colts played extremely well but they were disappointed that late in the game they gave up yards even though it was garbage time this is a pride filled bunch and they want to play well all four quarters so the Oilers come into this game one and one on the season they beat Cincinnati in their opener on the road 23-14 short of the first down Lost to San Diego last week, 13-7, and they come up empty on their first possession. There's their head coach, Jeff Fisher, replaced Jack Pardee in 94. He's 40 years old, and when we talked to him yesterday, he's a confident guy. He really is. He has a lot of confidence in the players that he has in place. This, this is a, a team that has been through a lot in the last three years, changing, changing cities, changing home venues. It's really as though they've been playing road games for almost two solid years. So Craig Hendrich back to punt, standing at his own 15-yard line, and Troy Brown ready to receive. He's at the 25. From the 25-yard line, Brown, and he's chopped down. Leroy Jones with the tackle, 46-yard punt and a two-yard return. The starting quarterback for New England, Drew Bledsoe, 46 and 37 as a starter, three-time Pro Bowler. And here's a guy, he's got all the tools to be one of the great ones by the time he finishes playing this game. And all the rhetoric coming out here is they know they're a good football team. They have to play for play like that. This is a team that historically has not lost to teams that, that you feel like they should beat. There's not too many that they don't feel like they should beat, but they play exactly the level they should every week. From the 26, Bledsoe passing off first down and he goes down. Lonnie Martz with the sack, ninth year out of Tulane. His first seven seasons he spent with Kansas City and Tampa Bay. The defense that the Oilers run is, is designed to bring pressure. You won't find a guy on this team that has way more sacks than everybody else. You'll have four or five guys that have a lot of sacks, a lot about the same amount of sacks. They get a lot of sacks from a lot of different people because their defense is so complex. Loss of six yards, second down and 16 from the 20. Out of the eye formation, Robert Edwards, the deep back. Bledsoe passing again out of the backfield. It's Tony Carter, and he is ridden out of bounds by Denard Walker, the second-year man out of LSU. Offensively for New England, Bruce Armstrong, 12th year out of Louisville. He's the left tackle, Lane Willibaw, Rucci, and Zephyrus Moss. The backs and receivers, Ben Coates returns. He missed the first game of his eight-year career last week because of an ankle injury. Terry Glenn, Sean Jefferson are the wide receivers. And Robert Edwards, the rookie out of Georgia, he's the starting tailback. Third down, 12 yards to go for Bledsoe. From the 24, they're out of the shotgun. Plenty of time, Bledsoe out of the backfield. And Drew Bledsoe connects up to the 27-yard line. Derek Cullors running the football for New England. And they are short of the first down and will send it away. Exactly the way that Oilers wanted to play this game defensively. If Drew Bledsoe does not get that ball out there on time, they want to get in his face. That was a deep time, deep route that Drew Bledsoe had to hang on to the ball for a long time, and the, and the def defense was able to make them throw the short pass and make the tackle. Tom Tupa punting. Derek Mason drifts to his 18. Mason up to the 30, and Derek Mason up to the 33-yard line, where he is stopped by Marty Moore. 11.22 to go, rather 13.01 to go in the first quarter, back in a moment. 11 minutes and 22 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. Tennessee, New England, scoreless here in Foxborough. Last time these two teams met, 1993. The Patriots lead the series 17-15 and one. Oilers winning the last game. McNair passing on first down and out of the backfield. It's Frank Wycheck with the reception. And he's stopped by Ted Johnson, the middle linebacker, in his fourth year out of Colorado. Head coach for New England, Pete Carroll, in his second year, was the defensive coordinator prior to coming to New England with the 49ers. Also was a head coach with the Jets in 94 for one season. Second down and nine from the 34-yard line. Eddie George, the lone setback. And George over the left side. 
Eddie George picks up a few. Chris Slade in on the play. That's the kind of running that, that, that the Oilers would really love to have. Getting a third and five. Now, third and five is a manageable down and distance. Last week, they were in first and 15, second and 18, third and fifth, 20. They really were in long yardage, even in run downs. And this is, if they can be as successful, even to a small degree on first and second down, they'll really give themselves a leg up on playing much better than they did a week ago. This season, Eddie George, his numbers down. Only 97 yards after two games. Third down and five. George out of the backfield. Nice catch. First down. Still running. George cuts it back and gets inside New England territory at the 34. Steve Lofton making the tackle. But Jeff Fisher told us yesterday that he's going to change things up and you're going to see his backs catching balls out of the backfield. That's one of the things that Eddie George can do. You see him slip out. They just forget about him. He comes out, and you see the physical nature. Even in the open field, he just shrugs Steve Lofton away from him. Steve Lofton has to drag him down from behind, wants no part of him. That stiff arm that Eddie George can deliver. A gain of 27 yards. First down and 10 from the 35. Jackie Harris in motion. McNair sprinting out. Plants, fires, and it's caught. Yancey Thickpin with the catch at the 26-yard line, making the 25. Ted Johnson with the tackle. Steve McNair showing off his arm there. He came out, was very patient after he broke contain. He, you, as you'll see, he'll hesitate even after he gets out wide to his right as he looks like he's ready to throw, but he waits on Yancey Thickpin to slide to his right, as you see, and just finds the open spot. You can't do that if your quarterback doesn't have a strong arm. Thickpin, six years in Pittsburgh, two-time Pro Bowler. Second down and one. Eddie George cuts it back, lowers his shoulder, and picks up the first down. Willie Clay, the safety with the tackle. This bunch on defense for the New England Patriots, led by Willie Clay in the secondary. And Steve Sidwell, the defensive coordinator, told us that Willie Clay is the guy that really makes those guys better back there. They are, they're a bunch of guys that really individually, they're not that great, but together they have emerged as one of the strong points of a good defense. Forced four turnovers last week in their win against Indianapolis, but Tennessee driving now. First down from the 22. Play action, McNair. In trouble, and he's cut down. Henry Thomas, the 12th year man out of LSU. He's the old veteran on the defensive line. He comes up with the sack. That's one way. That's one way to to keep. That's one way to keep Steve McNair from scrambling. You'll see him right there, 95 blue. He just stays patient, just keeps working. Just as St you get the feeling Steve McNair is going to take off and run. Henry Thomas grabs him by the ankles, and that's the best way to keep a scrambler from scrambling. Six-yard loss. Second down, 16 from the 28. Three-receiver package for the Oilers. Here comes a blitz. Delayed handoff. Eddie George with room to the far side, and George tiptoes out of bounds at the 27. Chris Canty there to give him a push. You see here early in the ballgame, on this second series, the Oilers have prided themselves in recent weeks of being able to score early in ballgames. Last week they had a first drive go all the way down and then had a touchdown call back. They never recovered from that. They are a team that likes to start fast. So right now, third down. And 11 yards to go from the 23 for the Oilers. Fans here in New England want a big play on defense. Thick pin in motion. Play action. McNair rolling in trouble. Got it away. It's caught. Frank Whitecheck with the reception, but he is short of the first down. Whitecheck, two straight years, the leading receiver on this Oiler squad. Not enough, though, to pick up the first down. You wonder how much Wycheck's missed practices this week due to his foot injury had to do with his, the fact that perhaps he wasn't as open or didn't have the ability, the strength, or the confidence to run that route and pull his leg out of the tackle. So Aldo Greco, 3 of 4 on the season. 15-year vet comes on to attempt a 34-yard field goal. And it's good. So the Oilers strike first, 6-14 to go. First quarter of play, they lead it 3-0.
Three to nothing, Tennessee leads New England. Bruce Matthews, the 16-year veteran, getting his helmet worked on on the sidelines for Tennessee. The scoring drive for the Oilers, nine plays, 51 yards. Short kick fielded at the 20-yard line. And the Patriots will get pretty good field, goal, field position as they start from their own 35. 6.06 to go in the first quarter. Drew Bledsoe and company on offense after this. Oilers leading it 3 to nothing. 6.06 to go here in the first quarter of play. There's that offensive coordinator for the New England Patriots, Ernie Zampezi. He feels that the Oiler defense is really blessed with some great players, especially at the safety position. But he feels also that if you're going to take advantage of it, you've got to do it outside. The New England Patriots, I think, really would love to get some big plays out of their wide receivers against, their cor against the Oiler cornerbacks. From the 35, Robert Edwards, the rookie from Georgia, over the left side, and he goes down at the 37, picks up a couple. George McCullough in on the play. Defense Defensively for Tennessee, Kenny Holmes, second year out of Miami, had seven sacks in five starts last year. They really like him along with Evans, Walker, and Lyons. And the linebackers, Joe Bowden, only 5'11", but he's quick. Eddie Robinson, they picked up from Jacksonville. And in the secondary, Walker, along with Lewis, Blaine Bishop, three-time Pro Bowler, and Marcus Robertson are the safeties. Second down at seven from the 38. Here comes a blitz. Bledsoe got it away quickly. Terry Glenn, far side, out of bounds, first down. Now let's go to New York, check in with Jim Nance for an NFL update. All right, Gus. Well, Vinny Testaverde got the start for the Jets and just the third play for New York. He dumps it off to Leon Johnson, and he shreds the Colts secondary, and he's off to an 82-yard touchdown, the longest pass play for the Jets in a dozen years. A quick seven for the Jets as we quickly head back to New England. All right, Jim, right here in New England, Tennessee, leading it 3 to nothing, but a big pass play. Drew Bledsoe hits Terry Glenn. And Bledsoe and Glenn connect for a 16-yard gain. And Terry Glenn, third year out of Ohio State, comes into this game with eight receptions for 96 yards. He played in only nine games in 1997 because of various injuries. Prior to that, he was Rookie of the Year. And here's a man that they're expecting big things out of. He has really been a, 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 a real important part of the offense here in New England. And you see there... Kenny Holmes coming off a guy that the Oilers are counting on today on their defense, and we'll have to watch that. They need him in there on the Oiler defense. They are very, very much challenging him to have a big day against Bruce Armstrong. First down from the 46, the pitch. Robert Edwards cuts it back in, and he spins down. Not a lot of room. That's because Anthony Cook, the fourth-year man out of South Carolina State, got a hand on him in the backfield. Kenny Holmes, he looks a little gimpy on the sidelines. Uh, the, the, he was shaken up on the pass plate again. He uh, was challenged by the coaching staff. He studied Bruce Armstrong, spent many hours studying just one guy, Bruce Armstrong, the left tackle for the New England Patriots, trying to get an edge. They really need him to have a game against this Patriot offense. Second down and eight from the 44. Edwards straight ahead, and he finds a crease. And bulldozes his way to the 36. Got a great block from Tony Carter, the fullback. Rob, Robert Edwards going through the line. They caught the Oilers in a blitz on the outside and ran the ball inside. Right here, you'll see the blitz comes from outside. Drew Bledsoe hands it. And you see the, the runner come this way, and the ball carry goes in this way. It's that simple. They caught them. That's one of the risky things about this Oiler defense. If they got you, they got you for a loss. But if you if you get them, it's a big play. Ben Colts in motion, third down and one. Robert Edwards again. This time he gets around the corner with running room. Edwards tiptoes inside the 20-yard line. Blaine Bishop pushes him out of bounds. But there is a flag on the play. It's a 17-yard game. And this will be brought back holding against the Patriots. And I don't know if it was the holding that caused that play to get outside, but 
Ernie Zampezia told us, he said, I don't think you can run outside on a 46 defense. Well, They're outside waiting on you. The thing to do offense. is to run. Ten yard penalty, repeat third down. Is to run up inside on this defense because it's set up to pursue outside. And on that play, they were able to get to the corner, get Robert Edwards outside, something that a lot of teams can't do. Watch Ben Coates here as he tries to tries to get them. He's called for the holding. As you see, he gets his hands outside the shoulder of the defensive back. And that they'll call that every time because the, it's very easy for the referee to see. Makes it third down and along 11. Flags on the play, and Bledsoe goes down in the backfield. Lonnie Marks again along with Blaine Bishop, but flags have been thrown. That's a tough hit to take for Drew Bledsoe on a play that is probably not going to count anyway. Yes, it was encroachment on the defense. He had a free play, but he had to take a hit, and it didn't get anything out of it. That's when you know Off there's a penalty. Line, 91 defense. It's a five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. On a five-yard penalty, you know it's a dead play if nothing happens, and then you had to get it hit in the face. That's a difficult thing for Drew Bledsoe to take, but they got pressure right now on Drew Bledsoe. It didn't matter, but watch the hit on Bledsoe. This is a dead play. Oh, That's helmet to helmet, too, and that's that could have been called, but it was a dead play anyway. It goes for not. Third down and six from the 41. Bledsoe near side, and he throws a bullet that's caught by Sean Jefferson. A gain of 12 yards and a first down. Sean Jefferson said earlier that Drew Bledsoe is a little bit of, different, of a different guy this year. He'll come to you in the huddle and say, listen, I need you on this play. I want you to on this play. Be aware on this play. Drew Bledsoe has become more vocal and much more demanding of his, of his fellow players. And I think his fellow players really have enjoyed that and have really enjoyed the opportunity to step up for him. Sean Jefferson, eighth year out of Central Florida, spent five years with San Diego from the 29. Love it, Purnell. Play action. Bledsoe sets up near side, and it's incomplete. Intended for Robert Edwards, but it was broken up by Eddie Robinson. Robert Edwards on the play was just standing out there waiting, waiting, waiting on the football. He's got to do something besides just stand there killing the grass. CBS Premier Week kicks off tomorrow with an all-new Monday. First, it's the season premiere of Cosby, followed by the new comedy, The King of Queens, with Kevin James and Jerry Stiller. Then check out Everybody Loves Raymond at a new time, followed by The Brian Benben Show and L.A. Doctors. It all begins tomorrow right here on CBS. Second down, 10 from the 29. Draw play, Edwards again. And he runs through the hole and gets to the 25, where Lonnie Martz stops it. Robert Edwards, the rookie from Georgia, when he was recruited to Georgia, he was recruited as a defensive back and spent his first two years as a defensive back, then made the transition to tailback and ended up being a first-round draft pick. The real question was, he had a few injuries in college, and they questioned his durability, but really they were, the Patriots took a chance on him. They are very happy with his abilities right now. Four carries, 15 yards for Edwards. Drew Bledsoe, and it's incomplete. Ball intended for Terry Glenn. Fans want it. Pass interference, but they do not get it. Daryl Lewis covering for the Oilers. Daryl Lewis knew and really anticipated being thrown at quite a bit today. You'll see Terry Glenn come out on number 29. Daryl Lewis just stops, and the fans thought this was interference, and it may well have been. Bledsoe's very upset about it. You don't see Drew Bledsoe get upset very often. He's a quiet guy, and that's why it was so surprising that he started to become more vocal, but he was vocal on that play. Adam Vinatieri, three of six on the season, in to attempt a 43-yarder. And it's up and good. 113 to go, first quarter. We're tied at three. Welcome back to Foxborough. 113 to go in the first quarter. Tennessee, New England tied at three apiece. And the scoring drive, nine plays, 37 yards. And they held the ball for five minutes. Vinatieri with a 44-yard field goal. He's set to kick it off back deep for the Oilers. Mike Archie and Derek Mason. 
85 is Mason. So Derek Mason at his own goal line. Loses his footing. Mason tries to get outside, but he's wrapped up. Troy Brown playing special teams. He's also the third receiver with the tackle flag on the play. It was an 18-yard run. This is going to put the Oilers way back deep in their own end to begin this drive. It's not something they want to do. They really struggled with penalties a week ago. And a holding call against Tennessee. So Tennessee pushed further Holding back. Number 50 on the return team on the run mark at the distance of the goal, first down. Terry Killens holding 101 to go in the first quarter. <laughs> 101 to go in the first quarter. Three apiece, Tennessee and New England. And the Oilers with the football at their own 10-yard line. Eddie George in the backfield. Draw play, George breaks a tackle. Eddie George goes forward and finally he stopped. Warrior Malloy got him. Ty Law, though, was there to trip him up. Now, when it comes to comedy, he ruled. Eddie George, a gain of four in the last play. Second down and six from the 14. George again, following his blocks, but nowhere to go. Eddie George tackled from behind. Todd Collins, the sixth year man out of Carson Newman, with the tackle. He started all 17 games a season ago for this Patriot squad, and that is the end of the first quarter of play. Tennessee, New England tied at three. We begin the second quarter. Oilers, Patriots tied at three apiece. Gus Johnson along with Steve Tasker. And yesterday when we talked to Jeff Fisher, he wants balance from his Oilers team. And right now the Oilers have six runs, seven passes, even though they're deep in their own end. If they can keep doing that, they feel that their offense is going to be successful in four quarters. Third down and seven from the 13. Mason in motion. Steve McNair steps up in trouble. McNair still on his feet, gets outside, he has running room. A first down, McNair scampers out of bounds at the 35, but a flag has been thrown. A 20 yard gain. And it's against Tennessee. Illegal hands to the face. Usually you see that on a defensive lineman going to the hands of the face of the offensive lineman. What happened was one of the defensive linemen fired off and the hands get up inside the face mask. It's very difficult to control that. Illegal use of hands. Number 72 offense. Hands to the face. At the distance of the goal. Still third down. That's Brad Hopkins. The left tackle. Thought to be by the Oilers. They think he's one of the best left tackles in the league and that's why you'll see it right here. Working against Thomas, against Henry, that's William McGinnis he's working against, and you'll see, you know, it looks like everybody's trading hands to the face there. Penalties, a big concern for the Oilers. 20 penalties, 163 yards. McNair passing in the end zone. Finds Eddie George out of the backfield, and George up to the 20, make it the 22, and Eddie George, power running, picks up the first down. Huge conversion by the Oilers coming out of their own end on a third and 13 coming out of here, and you'll never find a more crucial down this early in the football game. Steve McNair, this is two great players making great plays. Steve McNair buys himself time and finds Eddie George, who slipped around who slipped around Henry Thomas there, number 95, who ended up tackling him. That's two great, got two great players making plays for their teams. That's what makes an offense click. Eddie George having a big receiving day so far. McNair, plenty of time to throw underneath and it's caught. Caught by his tight end, Michael Rohn, he's a backup. 
One of the things that Steve McNair gives you as a quarterback, he never never tries to do too much. And he told us yesterday, he goes, you know, I'm trying to let the game come to me now. I, I'm not trying to do over overextend myself. He knows I've got great players around him. And he just lets the game come to him. Steve McNair, 20 of 34 last week against San Diego, 193 yards, a touchdown, no interceptions. Second down and six from the 26. Roan in motion. This time, it's Rodney Thomas running, and he scatters up to the 30-yard line, about two yards shy of the first down. Hey, kids, now there's an NFL website just for you. Learn about your favorite players in the NFL Kid Zone, only on cbs.sportsline.com. You got five I'm kids, gonna, so. My kids will be on that. That's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I hope I have time to get on. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta wade through five kids to get to my own computer. McNair perfect so far, eight of eight, 71 yards, third down and short. Short drop, McNair over the middle, and it's caught. Steve McNair putting that ball on the money, and Willie Davis with the catch, gain of eight, and a first down for Tennessee. Chris Candy had pretty good coverage. Chris Candy has Willie Davis man-to-man. -man. They've had one guy free in the middle. You watch him, just be patient and slam it in the ball. If the ball is thrown in there, that's almost impossible to defend. Chris Candy actually did an excellent job there, even though the pass was completed. Willie Davis and Yancey Thigpen, the starting receivers, the go-to guys for Steve McNair this year. Willie Davis spent four years in Kansas City, second on this team in receptions a year ago with 43. And Steve McNair saw something at the line of scrimmage that he didn't like. Timeout, Tennessee. 11.46 to go in the second quarter. We're tied at three apiece. Tennessee, New England tied at three apiece. 11 minutes, 46 seconds to go in the second quarter. Don't forget, coming up next, the second game of our doubleheader, John Elway and the Broncos. They take on Jeff George and the Raiders. First down and 10 from the 40. Frank Wycheck in motion. Eddie George. And Eddie George is knocked backwards. Chad Eaton, second year man out of Washington State, filling the hole and making the play. The defensive line of the Patriots just stonewalled the Oilers. The, the line of scrimmage, watch the line of scrimmage move this direction as they fire off. Even the fullback, Frank Wycheck, has no place to stick his head in to even get a block. Great defensive line play, great penetration. Second down and nine. Eddie George, seven carries, 18 yards. Here he is again as he slashes through the defense this time and gets up to the 45. So they're determined to run the football for Eddie George. 15 carries, 11 yards last week. And when we spoke to him yesterday, he said, hey, it was just one of those days. We know that we can run the ball on anybody. As much as we've talked about balance and run and passing, as good as Steve McNair has played thus far, Eddie George is still their bread and butter. He's got to carry the football and carry it well for them to be successful. A pro bowler a year ago, 1,399 yards. Fourth best in Oilers history. Third and five. McNair firing again, and it's caught. Steve McNair has been perfect thus far this time. It's Jackie Harris is tied in with a 10-yard gain, and McNair 10 of 10 in the first half. He's very quietly having not just a good game, a phenomenal game. He hasn't missed a pass yet. Most of these passes he's throwing, you'll see here, are just 8 to 10 yards down the field. He's got the accurate arm as well as a strong arm to get it in there in between the defenders, and they are having a field day against the secondary. Jackie Harris, the former Packer and Buccaneer, signed as a free agent, first down from the 45. McNair, far side, and it's broken up at the last moment. Good-looking defensive play. Willie Davis, the intended receiver. Chris Canty covering. I've played on this field before. When you throw towards the Patriots sideline in the first half, you have to fight the sun. And we, sitting up here in our booth, you can even look. Sometimes it's even hard to see the Oiler numbers on those white jerseys. And I think when, when Willie Davis turned around to pick that up, I think it took him a fraction of a second longer to pick that ball up out of the sky. 
The first incompletion for Steve McNair of the get afternoon. It, He's 10 of 11. Now out of the shotgun. Second down and 10. McNair steps up in the pocket, breaks a tackle, and it's incomplete. Intended for Willie Davis once again, and he's underthrown. And there you see the pressure by Willie McGinnis and the strength of Steve McNair to just shrug the pressure off, step up, got a little bit panicked in the pocket and couldn't make an accurate throw, was trying to get rid of it to just avoid the sack. Really looked like he should have taken off and run with that. Trying to play a little bit too much, perhaps, within himself and not make that happen. Now they've got a third and ten that they've got to convert. And his numbers thus far, 10 of 12. 12th play of the drive that started at the 10-yard line for the Oilers. Third down and 10. McNair! And it's incomplete. A lot of backside pressure on Steve McNair. Larry Wiggum, backup quarterback, came on the blitz. Now, next Saturday at noon Eastern on CBS Sports, it's a NASDAQ college football doubleheader. In the first game, Heisman hopeful Cade McDowell leads UCLA against the Miami Hurricanes. And in the nightcap, Tim Couch challenges Steve Spurrier's attack when the Wildcats tangle with the Gators. You wonder which of those guys we might be doing a game for here in the NFL, those quarterbacks there. That's a good pair of quarterbacks you can watch. High spiraling kick. goes into the end zone. 45-yard punt for Craig Hendricks. Nine minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the second quarter of play. We're still tied at three. Beautiful day here in New England. Uh, the Oilers and the Patriots tied at three. The weather, 80 degrees, low humidity, and a slight wind. First down and 10 for New England from their own 20. Vincent Brisby, the motion man. Here comes a blitz. They pitch it. Shaw around the corner and play strung out nicely by the Oilers. Anthony Cook ushers him out of bounds. The Oilers bring in all kinds of people from the secondary, timing it up so that they can get there right at the snap. This is the kind of thing that Jeff Fisher's defense will do. They'll bring guys from all over the field and wreak havoc in a run game because they can get penetration through the gaps in the offensive line. A form of the 46 defense that he learned from Buddy Ryan. Eddie George being taped up on the sidelines. No gain on the last play, second and 10. Shaw again and no room for him there either. Josh Evans grabs him. Now don't forget, coming up on the NASDAQ Halftime Report, Jim Nance, Marcus Allen, Brent Jones, and George Seifert will have all the scores and highlights. Plus, Phil Simms and Greg Gumbel preview the Denver-Oakland game. That's all coming up on the NASDAQ Halftime Report. That Denver-Oakland game is, a, is, I hate to say it, but it's a bloodbath every time they play. No matter who's win, who's a great team, who's a bad team, who's supposed to win, who's supposed to lose. That thing is a, is a really bad game. Third down and nine from the 21. Over the middle, and Drew Bledsoe skips it to Vincent Brisby. And the fans here in New England getting a little upset with some of the play calling. Bledsoe, four of seven, 36 yards. You rarely see that from, you rarely see this from Drew Bledsoe. No pressure, just throws it out there and just one hops it. I mean, that's just a, that's just a short throw. Yeah, and that's, you know, if you're a short, if you're a shortstop, you can still throw the guy out at first. But if you're a receiver, <laughs> you, you walk to the side. That doesn't count. Tom Tupa standing at his own six. Eric Mason back deep, low wobbly kick. Mason up to the 40. And Mason up to the 47, make it the 48-yard line before being dragged down. 8.03 to go in the second quarter, three apiece. Couple of field goals, all the scoring so far here in New England. And the game summary. Five first downs for the Oilers. That's because Steve McNair has been very precise in the passing game. And the rushing, neither team doing exceptionally well. First down from the 47, play action for McNair. Looking, plenty of time, far side, nice catch. Yancey Thigpen stretches out, makes the grab, and he picks up close to eight yards. Working against Ty Law. Working against Ty Law, who, Ty Law 
really wanted and begged for the chance to play against the best receiver of the opponents had to offer every week. Last week he came up with two interceptions. This week, working against Yancey Thigpen, who in this case has had success against him. Ty Law is the best cornerback that the Patriots have. Eddie George plowing ahead inside the 40-yard line where Greg Spires is there to tackle him. And Jeff Fisher said he wants Eddie to run the football a minimum of 25 times. What does that do when a big back like that continues to run the ball all afternoon? Well, it, it frees up all, the whole offense. Now if Steve McNair knows that he can drop back and throw because they don't know that he's going to pass. They know that they're committed to the... The Patriots know the Oilers are committed to the run game and have to play it honest. First down from the 39. Frank Wycheck, the motion man. Draw play. George bounces it outside. Now turns it up and gets to the 37. Now let's go to New York. Jim Nance for an NFL update. All right, Gus and Steve, we're seeing a different San Diego team than the one the Oilers saw last week. Rich Gannon of the Chiefs back on his feet. He'll sling it sidearm. Andre Risen with the touchdown. 16 0. KC in the second. Let's go back to you. All right, Jim, Spider-Man Rising. That's what they call him in Kansas City. Kansas City is no fun to play there. It is no fun. Matter of fact, we talked to Drew Bledsoe yesterday. <laughs> he said Ryan called him from the hospital, and he may have come down with the case of the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> McNair rolling. Now turns it up. Steve McNair with running room and slides down at the 32. And that's what Steve McNair can do for you. It's just now, it's not a bad play. It didn't come out to be a pass completion, but it's a plus three yard gain. Now it's three, it's third and three. Watch Lawyer Malloy come in late on this play as Steve McNair finally tucks it and runs. Lawyer Malloy is the guy that comes in and really wants to, oh, a swing and a miss. Lawyer Malloy is physical safety, and those guys, if there's one thing they want to do as safeties, they want to send a message, and it's of the physical type in nature. Steve McNair, some call him a fullback that can throw. Fourth down, seven yards to go. Rather, fourth down underneath, and it's caught. And a first down, make that third down, excuse me. The Oilers, four for seven on third down conversions. Very close to a first down. They're going to measure. It's going to depend on the spot, but it looks as though he got it with the last final stretch of the football. Steve Fisher really disappointed that his team, after being through so much, playing so many road road after so many road games this team has really come together and this is the kind of place where his team really plays well on the road because of so many obstacles and things and I called him the wrong I Jeff think, Fisher, I, yeah, I think you're a you know, I would never have, I would never have done that had he not told me not to yesterday <laughs> I would never he have said been, don't call me Steve Fisher. it would never have happened had he not said <laughs> I was so mad when it happened and uh, that it happened to him before so he said told us not to do it and there I did First down and 10 from the 29-yard line. Steve McNair, McNair, 12 of 15, 103 yards. Eddie George, straight ahead, and he gets to the 25. So Eddie George continues to carry the load for the Oilers, native of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, played at Ohio State, where he won the Heisman Trophy. 33 yards so far on 11 carries, second down seven from the 26. Here comes the blitz and the Patriots jump off sides. Brandon Mitchell trying to get a quick start. Finally, it looks like after two weeks, the Oilers get a play that's going to help them instead of hurt them on, with a penalty. So they march it five yards down. 98 defense, the five-yard penalty is still second down. One of the interesting things about these two teams is neither has turned the ball over in any of their first two games, and that's one of the reasons they've been able to play so tough. Last week, even though in losing, Tennessee didn't turn the ball over in that football game. And we asked Steve McNair, and he said one of the things that he does better than anybody is protect the football. Second down and two from the 21. And off 
sides again. But Willie McGinnis said somebody on the left side of the Oilers offensive line moved. If the defense did something to try and draw them off without making an attempt, it's on the defense. Offsides again. There's a new rule, a new interpretation this year. Zone infraction, 65 defense, five yard penalty, first down. You used to see defenders jump and hop around trying to get the offensive lineman to jump off sides. Now that is illegal unless it's done in a way that is con is consistent with the way that they play. They can move forward to make them uh, in, in anticipation of the snap count, but they can't move backwards just to try and draw them off. Red zone numbers for Tennessee. That's inside the 20-yard line. McNair play action again in the end zone, incomplete. Intended for Yancey Thigpen. And McNair throws it out of bounds. Strap yourself in. The new season. Second down 10 for Tennessee at the New England 16-yard line. Eddie George. And George gets inside the 15. Todd Collins wraps him up. Todd Gall Collins is an excellent run defender, more so the, a run guy than he is a pass guy. He's going to come out here in third and long as you see him run off the field. They're going to bring in their guys that to defend the pass. They bring in ex two extra defensive backs now. The Oilers anticipating a run by, uh, pass by the Oilers down here in the red zone. Makes it third down and seven. Thigpen to the far side. Willie Davis to the near side, out of the offset eye. Wide check in motion. Play action, McNair throwing on the run, caught by Wycheck, looking for the first down, but he's short. Larry Wiggum with the tackle, Frank Wycheck about a yard and a half short of the first down. That was a great tackle by Larry Wiggum out there in open field. It's so difficult, especially when you get a tight end out there who's so big. And, and Frank Wycheck is an athlete. I mean, he's a good receiver, catches a lot of footballs and can run after the catch. Larry Wiggum coming up, making a great play to force the field goal attempt. Al Del Greco, his last field goal, extends his scoring streak. 63 straight games he scored. That's a club record. And with two minutes to go in the first half of play, Al Del Greco looking to score again for Tennessee. Welcome back to New England. Al Del Greco in to attempt a 26-yard field goal. Craig Hendrich is his holder. And it's good. 26-yarder good for Del Greco. And with a minute 57 to go in the second quarter, the Oilers take a 6-3 lead. 26-yard field goal by Al Del Greco gives Tennessee a 6-3 lead with 1.57 to go here in the first half of play. Now coming up on the NASDAQ Halftime Report, Jim Nance, Marcus Allen, Brent Jones, and George Seifert will have all the scores and highlights, plus Phil Sims and Greg Gumbel preview the Denver-Oakland game. It's all coming up on the NASDAQ Halftime Report. Del Greco kicking off for the Oilers. And New England running it out. Cedric Shaw, not a very good decision. He gets to the 11-yard line. Five yards in his own end zone, only returns it 16 yards. When you have a minute 52 left, you don't want to start on your own 11-yard line. Just take a knee, take it on the 20. It's something that your offense is at least used to doing. This is now they're in a hole. They've got to get to the Oiler 35 before they'll have an opportunity for Vinatieri to kick a field goal. His range is about 52 yards both ways, depending on the wind, but about 52-yard field goal is what Vinatieri can do. First down from the 11. Play action for Bledsoe. Near side, and it's broken up. Great defensive play. Marcus Robertson, the eighth-year man out of Iowa State, closed on that play quickly. Terry Glenn 
Terry Glenn on a deep out. Marcus Robertson, you can see there, he's upset he didn't come up with that. That's a play that an NFL safety thinks they should make every single time. Five interceptions last year for Robertson. Drew Bledsoe, he's missed his last four passes. Second down and ten. Bledsoe throwing on the run. It's caught. Troy Brown with the catch at the 17. Tackled by Eddie Robinson. And the no-huddle offense now being used by New England. Now they're still huddling up. They're not going to take a timeout. They've got all three of their timeouts left and only a minute 25 left. You would think that they'd be hurrying up a little more or using a timeout to get down in the field. You don't want to go to halftime with a timeout in your pocket. Troy Brown lines up in the slot on the far side. Here comes a blitz. Bledsoe, far side, caught Troy Brown. Gets all the way up to the 35. But he didn't get out of bounds. Samari roll with the tackle. And Drew Bledsoe takes the quick time out there. They're going to talk things over with one minute to go. Out to the 33-yard line. Still about 35 yards from where they need to be. Gain of 15. Crucial that the receivers for the Pat Patriots try and get out of bounds. The Oilers know this. And you see Samari roll trying to get uh, did he get out of bounds? yes he did and he said he didn't he, he looked and see if he got out of bounds and when he knew he didn't he called that quick timeout and a lot of times he'll run instead of running down after the receiver he'll stand next to the referee to make sure that the referee knows his wishes and gets the timeout as quickly as he can so the ball spotted on the 34 Bledsoe 6 of 10 59 yards first down with 104 to go in the half. That's Kenny Holmes back in the lineup after going out early in the first quarter with a leg injury. Bledsoe under pressure and Bledsoe sacked in the backfield. Steve Jackson got to him first. Kenny Holmes cleaned him up. The Oilers had six defensive backs in the game looking like they were going to back off and play, play a soft zone. They brought the blitz, and Steve Jackson came off the corner. The pocket collapsed, and Drew Bledsoe had no chance to make anything happen other than to just protect the football. Clock still running, 48 and counting. Loss of four, third down, second down, 14. And it's incomplete. More pressure on Bledsoe. Once again, Pratt Lyons in there grabbing him around the ankles. Had no chance of get any, getting anything on that throw. They do stop the clock with that incompletion, but now it's third and 15. You'll see Pratt Lyons there grabbing him by the knee. And at that point, the quarterback still feels he can get the pass off. The, the legs don't bother him so much as long as they're not pulling him down. Makes it third down at 14 from the 30. Letso out of the shotgun again. 41 seconds to go. Offsides coming up. Free play for New England. Letso fires down the field. Picked off. But this comes back. That's a squasher. Trying, trying to hit John Jeff Sean Jefferson. That's a squasher because that's really a play that Drew Bledsoe threw. They had a free play. The defense was that knew that Offside, it was 99 defense. The five-yard penalty still third down. No matter what good thing happened for the defense on that play, they couldn't win. It was a squasher. And then they have to come back. That was an interception. The half would have been over. In fact, the Oilers would have had an opportunity to come down and try another field goal with 34 seconds left and two timeouts. But now they go back and they do it again, third and ten. From the 35, 34 seconds to go, and offsides again. Kenny Holmes, the second year man from Miami. Let me tell you guys, that is so frustrating as a team standing on the sidelines watching your defense trying to close out a half to see them make mistakes like that. Offside, defense unabated towards the quarterback. That's a five-yard penalty, still third down. And that was why Steve, Jeff, 
That's why Jeff Fisher was so upset with his team last week. That's just lack of discipline, lack of concentration. Where, where are their minds when they know that it's third and ten and all they have to do is close them out for one more play? Fifth penalty for the Oilers, 30 yards. And penalties have been a big concern for Coach Fisher this season. One of the main reasons Jeff Fisher and his team did not win last week was because of their propensity for penalties. Third down and four. Four receivers in. Bledsoe firing, caught by Jefferson at the 40. Samari roll with the tackle, but it's a gain of 20 yards for the Patriots and a first down with 28 seconds to go. And Kenny Holmes, the offsides penalty, really hurt him. Kenny Holmes, the guy that they wanted to have a great game against the offensive lineman, Bruce Armstrong, killed him on this drive, along with, along with the other the other guys that had the offside penalties as well, two in a row. And you'll see, letting Sean Jefferson run down the field, find the open area, just turns up. Drew Bledsoe just hits him in the open area. They're five yards away from being in Vinatieri's range for a field goal. Plenty of, now with 28 seconds left, that, that's plenty of time with a timeout left to make the five yards give yourselves a chance. Now, it may be if they feel confident in one of their play selections to go deep for the end zone to try and give them a chance to get seven. First down, 10 from the 40-yard line for the Patriots. And another offside penalty coming up against the Oilers. No, they... Now it's the uh, now the Patriots have jumped off sides. Now they're ten yards away from a field goal range. We'll start 88 offense, five yard penalty, still first off. Terry Glenn. They called that on the wide guy lined up out of the line out wide out near the sidelines. The wide receiver must have twitched in his stance. You rarely see that called. Wide receivers can't hear the snap count anyway, and to see that they jumped off side trying to anticipate it that. That's a mistake, and Pete Carroll is not happy. He doesn't believe it. He's standing over there watching it, too. He must not have seen it. First and 15 from the Oiler 45. Bledsoe towards the end zone, and it's incomplete. Intended for Terry Glenn. No flags on the play. Just as we said a moment ago, and now's the time maybe take a shot at the end zone. Try and get a touchdown instead of just settling for the field goal. They've got plenty of time. They, yeah, This would not have counted anyway. As you'll watch here, he'll run. He'll go out of bounds up in this area. And once he does that, he cannot come back in bounds and catch that pass. The crowd was screaming because they thought he was pushed out of bounds, which, which would be illegal contact. But no call, and it was a good no call. 22 seconds remaining in the first half. Second down, 15. Let's go. And he threw a missile. Now Vincent Brisby with the catch inside the 25-yard line. Now they take the final timeout, 15 seconds left. Now comes a decision. Do you take the final throw at the end zone? You got a first down. If it's incomplete, you still have plenty of time to kick the field goal. If it is complete, you got the touchdown, and perhaps if it's a quick throw, you've got time enough to spike the football and still give your chance, team a chance to kick the field goal if it's short of the touchdown. Steve Jackson, Steve Jackson of the Oilers will come over and almost intercept this ball. You'll see right here as he reads the route just over his fingertips. That's a game of inches, and he. Drew Bledsoe threw that ball where only Vincent Brisby could catch it. Steve Jackson, eighth year out of Purdue. Now the Patriots after the 21 game, one yard gain from the 24. Bledsoe looking in the end zone for Brisby and it's incomplete. Ball overthrown. But with 11 seconds to go, do they have time for one more play? Well, they took five seconds on that play with 11 seconds left. Why not? 
Why not? You're only down by three with an offense that's one of the best in the AFC. Why not take a shot at the end zone? Take a chance that you're going to have the shot. It's a 30, a 41-yard attempt, 42-yard attempt if they do it from right here. Take another shot at the end zone. There's nothing. You have plenty of time to get that clock stopped, if, even if you complete it. So Terry Glenn and Troy Brown to the far side. Jefferson to the near side. Ben Coates lines up as the tight end on the near side as well. Bledsoe in the end zone. This one sails out of bounds. So here comes Adam Vinatieri with five seconds to go, ready to attempt his second field goal of the game. And we said they'd try for 10. That was a half-hearted attempt at a touchdown. Drew Bledsoe knew if it came open, he was going to gun it in there. But if he was covered as he was, he just threw the ball out of the end zone and said, OK, we'll take the three. So Vinatieri ready for a 42-yard attempt. The Patriots helped hugely by those two offsides penalties that kept this drive alive. Away! And it is perfect. 42 yard field goal for Adam Vinatieri. And it ties the game up at six apiece. And that is the end of the first half of play. Jeff Fisher can't be happy about the penalties that cost them the opportunity to score. That's the end of the first half with the score 6-6. Coming up next, it's the NASDAQ halftime report after this message and a word from your local station. Back to Foxborough Stadium where the Oilers and Patriots are tied at six at halftime. And the statistics in the first half of play Interesting numbers. Both teams came into this game wanting to run the football. Neither have been able to today. The real, the real thing you see there is highlighted time of possession. The, the Oilers really haven't been effective numbers-wise on offense, but the only number they have, Drew Bledsoe can't beat them if he's not on the football field. In almost 19 minutes, almost 20 minutes of time of possession, that's a huge benefit to them. Even though they've hurt themselves on penalties, their offense has held on to the football, team, football and given themselves a chance to be successful. Also, Drew Bledsoe under a lot of pressure so far today. Interestingly enough, the Oilers last week did not blitz Ryan Leaf, a rookie quarterback, much at all. And that's usually a given in the National Football League. This week, they came into Foxborough with a seasoned veteran in Drew Bledsoe, and they're blitzing him all the time. Every obvious passing situation, they're bringing extra people, and it has worked. So the Oilers and the Patriots are tied at six apiece. We're ready for the second half. After this, CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after a word from your local station. You're watching. We're ready to begin the second half here in Foxborough, Tennessee, and New England tied at six apiece. Gus Johnson along with Steve Tasker. And the Patriots will have the ball to begin the second half of play. Drew Bledsoe in the first half, eight of 16, 100 yards. And he has been under a lot of pressure in this game. They are bringing the heat from all different angles. In the end zone. And out of the end zone, that one goes. Craig Hendrick, five of eight of his kickoffs coming into this game, touchbacks. Last year, the entire season, Tennessee with only four touchbacks. So he was brought here from Green Bay to do just that and also punt. Over the course of a game, that'll give you probably 40 to 50 yards of overall field position that the offense, the defense does not have to defend against. Their offense now has to start from their 20 rather than normally the normal starting position after a kickoff is somewhere around the 30-yard line. So that over the course of a ball game, however many times you kick, that adds up to a lot of yards. First down and 10 for New England. From their own 20-yard line, Bledsoe passing on first down to the far side incomplete. Overthrows Terry Glenn. You see here early on, Drew Bledsoe dropping back, getting rid of the ball very quickly. Very, very much aware of the pressure that he's been getting in the first half and really the plan for the Oilers was to put him, make him get rid of the ball on time. And now you can see the New England Patriots doing just that, dropping back very quickly and throwing the ball on a three-step drop. Brings up second down and long. Glenn to the far side. Troy Brown to the near side. Ben Coates in motion. Play action. Bledsoe, and he swarmed again. Inside the 10. This time, it's Lions. Pratt Lyons with the sack. That's the third time Bledsoe has been sacked today. Tennessee knew that if they could get Drew Bledsoe 
not to be able to throw the ball out of there, they'd have a chance to get some sacks. Their offensive line has a tendency to block for a certain amount of time, and then their mental clocks go off, and they think, and they have trusted Drew Bledsoe to get rid of the ball before. He's not going to be able to do that today against this defense. A loss of six yards, third down and 16 from the 14-yard line for New England. Bledsoe over the middle and it's caught. Colors trying to get upfield, but nowhere to go. He gets up to the 25, making the 26, well shy of the first down. It was so obvious right from the snap that the Oilers said, okay, you can hit that short pass. We're going to come up and make the tackle. They absolutely conceded the short pass there, knew that they had so far to convert. Given the, give the statistic, we'll take the ball. Marcus Robertson was there to tackle him. Brings on Tom Tupa, punting from the 10. God! Wobbly kick, that's short. Mason from the 29, makes two people miss. Mason still on his feet, trying to get outside, and he is finally tied down at the 38. 45-yard punt, 8-yard return, 13-14 to go, third quarter, tied at six apiece. New England, Tennessee tied at six here in the third quarter of play. Oilers with the football at their own 38, first down. Eddie George, the low setback. Here's George trying to go outside, kept his balance. Eddie George down the sidelines and is pushed out of bounds at the 39. He broke the tackle of Ty Law at the line of scrimmage. You see, just barely keeping his balance. That's what a great back does. He's so big and so physical, it takes more pressure than usual to bring a guy down. He's got huge legs. Ty Law tripping him up. Another great play by Eddie George, keeping this offense on the, right on schedule. Lawyer Malloy pushes him out of bounds, but look at the great balance by Eddie George. 13 carries, 60 yards. Draw play George again. Looking for a hole at the line of scrimmage, and he skips to the 35. Now check out the official NFL website for live play-by-play -play and statistics from every game. Plus, log on Monday morning for week three highlights and recaps on www.nfl.com. So the 24-yard run by Eddie George, a season long. Oilers driving again. Second down, eight from the New England, 36. Far side, it's caught. This time, Willie Davis on the slant, cradles the football and gets close to a first down. It really seems like the Oiler offense has the Patriot defense really standing around looking at each other and saying, wait a minute. We're supposed to be playing a little better than this, but the Oiler offense is executing. You see them, they're crisp in and out of the huddle. They've got a great attitude about this drive. They're feeling good. They know they're a good football team, but I think, really, this is a team that has to prove it to themselves rather than anybody else. Steve McNair, nickel and diamond. 14 of 18, 117 yards. Eddie George. Outside, George. Take a tackle, rather, by Chris Slade. Slade got him from behind. There's a guy used to rushing the passer. Played some great run defense there. Really played off the block of the offensive lineman. Made Eddie George hesitate. Wanted to cut back. Slade wouldn't let him. Then Slade also slid to the outside. Got his hands on. Was able to pull him down. That's a great play. Very difficult to do with a big offensive lineman to cover two gaps and take both away from the running back. Slade playing with a sore knee. Had nine sacks last year. And also was a selection for the Pro Bowl. Second down six from the 22. McNair looking in the end zone. And it's broken up. Ty Law standing right on the play. He gets up shaking his head. He says, not on my side. Yancey Thickpin, the intended receiver. Ty Law, you'll see at the top as he backs out. You'll see Yancey Thigman hesitate, then move to the inside. 
Steve McNair thought he was going to go up the sideline, and that's why the ball actually looked like it was thrown to Ty Law rather than Yancey Thigpen. Yancey Thigpen becoming the defensive back, knocking it away and saving the interception. Ty Law, two interceptions last week, one a 59-yard return for a touchdown against Indianapolis. He wants the check, the number one receiver on opposing teams. Third and six. Here's a screen. George with blockers. A lot of room. Eddie George looking for the end zone. Touchdown. To Eddie George for the touchdown. 22 yards. Perfectly timed play. Perfectly executed. And the play call at that moment was perfect. They had a blitz on. The Patriots came with everybody. And Eddie George slipped in behind the rush. And there was nobody there to stop him. You see colors. You see Brewski come in. It's too late. Once he gets... Once he completes that ball, there was absolutely nobody in front of him. Even Bruce Matthews, the offensive guard, was out there, had nobody to block. So Jeff Fisher told us yesterday that he was going to go to his backs out of the backfield catching passes. That was the big wrinkle in the offense this week. And Eddie George with the touchdown. The extra point is good. Ten minutes, 56 seconds to go in the third quarter, and the Oilers take a 13-6 lead. Thirteen six, Tennessee leads New England. Eddie George, second touchdown reception of his career, and the scoring drive, six plays, 62 yards. Into the end zone, Colors brings it out three yards deep. Colors breaks it outside at the 30, and he goes down at the 37. 41-yard return, but a flag has been thrown. Derek Colors leads the AFC in kickoff returns, averaging 34 per game. Oh, that's going to hurt. Personal fall, unnecessary roughness. Number 23 on the return team, on the run back. That's a 15-yard penalty for Stalin. Here's a look at the touchdown that, to Eddie George just a moment ago. You'll see, you'll see Chris Slade, Wiggum, and also Teddy Bruschi all come up, and they'll run right by Eddie George, who'll just slip out, catch the ball. When he turns up the field, there's nobody out here. You see Bruce Matthews running down. Willie Clay's the last guy at the line of scrimmage. He was clearing the end zone. That is no chance. A great, great execution. Perfect timing. Robert Edwards on the sweep. Edwards nowhere to go. Spins out of trouble and is tackled for a big loss inside the 15. Eddie Robinson there to make the stop. And the Bulls cascade here in Foxborough. Pete Carroll said he did not want Robert Edwards to blame himself for the lack of the running productivity. They haven't ran well in the first half, but this is this will wreak havoc on a young back's confidence. All he sees is white jerseys. There's nowhere to run, and that is the worst thing to happen to a team trying to establish a football, a running game. Robert Edwards, five carries, 12 yards. Lost three on that play. Bledsoe. And it's caught at the 30. Reception made by Ben Coates. First reception of the game, remember, he sat out last week because of a sprained ankle, the first game he's missed in his eight-year career. Played 113 straight, and he is gimpy on that ankle. He was not a factor in the first half at all. Drew Bledsoe, he, he is Drew Bledsoe's favorite receiver, but was ineffective and did not play last week, and they felt it offensively. They were looking for him to come back and help them out and has not been able to do so today. Gain seven, third down three from the 29. Bledsoe under pressure again, got it away. Colors out of the backfield, makes a first man miss and gets up to the 37. Steve Jackson with the tackle. Drew Bledsoe, great job hanging in there. Just throws a, just a duck out to his left. The pocket was collapsing around him. All he did was look and flick it with his wrist. You'll see he runs out of room to stand in there. And just as he's falling backwards, he just flips it without hardly even looking. And Derek Cullis is able to make the first guy miss and convert for the first down. From the 37, Bledsoe passing off first down. In the seam, caught. 
Terry Glenn on the post gets inside Tennessee territory. Marcus Robertson with the stop. You see now if Drew Bledsoe can get out and get that ball out on time, if the pressure doesn't reach him, he will still beat you. This ball was thrown as a timing route, a thin post route to Terry Glenn. And those are big plays for the New England Pitt. Those are the routes that are very difficult to hit. That's a difficult throw. It takes a great quarterback. Bledsoe throwing again. This time he finds Brisby. Now Drew Bledsoe is starting to get in the groove. He is really flipping it out there. Gain of 16. Well, you can just tell that Drew Bledsoe says, listen, if they're going to do that to our run game, just give me the football and let me throw it, and it's working here so far. They've really picked it up in the last four plays. They've moved down this field like they were in a track meet. He just steps back, hits, hits Brisby on just a hook pattern, catches it and turns it up the field. Big game. Has thrown for 3,500 yards four straight years. Robert Edwards, and Edwards gets to the 15. Joe Bowden, the middle linebacker, with the tackle. And that's as effective a run as they've had all day, and it's set up by the fact that Drew Bledsoe has been killing them with the pass. It doesn't matter which sets up which, it, where the run sets up the pass, the pass sets up the run. If one's successful, the other will benefit from it. Seven minutes, 27 seconds remain in the third quarter. Injured player on the field. Back to Foxborough after this. Oilers lead at 13-6, 7.27 to go in the third quarter. Best drive of the day so far for New England. Started on their own 23-yard line. Pete Carroll, Jeff Fisher looking on. Joe Salavea was the injured player. He walked off the field on his own. Second down and five from the 15. Bledsoe in the end zone. Incomplete. A healthy Ben Coates catches that football. You can tell he just doesn't feel like he just did, couldn't extend after that football. But you know what? who they miss is the guy they lost to the New York Jets, Curtis Martin. In the last few years, he has been a large percentage of the offense for the New England Patriots. You see there that those are rushing touchdowns, 80%. 86% of the rushing touchdowns, and on the ground, he carried the ball three quarters of the time for this football team, got 80% of the rushing yards for them. He was a huge part, and that is a tangible void that is that they haven't yet filled. He struggled so far with the Jets. 45 carries, 116 yards. Bledsoe throws a missile to Coates, and Big Ben laterals it to Troy Brown. Touchdown! But a flag has been thrown. Rather, they say he was down. Forward progress was stopped. First down. If you watch, watch Ben Coates, the question is, when does his knee hit the ground? And if you watch, he's going to try and get this ball to Troy Brown. When his knee touches, the play's over, it's over, and he's still got the football in there. That's a good play. That's a good call, excellent call. Watch it, one more look. You'll see, you may not be able to see, his, there his knee's down, he's still got the football. That's an excellent call by the official. So instead of a touchdown, first down goal to go from the nine, Robert Edwards, and he is drilled. Josh Evans, fourth year out of UAB, with the mean stick. That was a, that was a textbook, you know, a textbook tackle. That's, those are the kind you read about in the playbook. Robert Edwards comes in, looks like he's got a little daylight, but Josh Evans comes up, fills the hole, bang! And he's a, you don't want to mess with the big defensive lineman. Second down, goal to goal. Edwards again, picking his way, touchdown! So Robert Edwards, the rookie from Georgia, seven-yard touchdown. Adam Vinatieri in to attempt the extra point, Away. and it's good. Watch Robert Edwards here, and you so they haven't been productive in the in the running game, but 
Pete Carroll said it's not this guy's fault. You can see here, you get some idea of what he can do with the ball when he gets a chance. That's their touchdown, and we'll be right back. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Snickers and by Advil. Derek Mason from his own five-yard line trying to break it outside and Mason goes down at the 20. At 9, 8 central. The scoring drive for New England. 10 plays, 77 yards. Robert Edwards, seven-yard touchdown. And they are rocking in Foxborough. McNair, out of the backfield, finds Wycheck. Frank Wycheck, no game. Ty Law, first contact. Chris Slade also there. When you catch a football in the National Football League, when you turn up the field, the last thing you want to see is two linebackers and a cornerback waiting to tackle you. It looked like for a moment he was going to have a little room and gain a couple of yards with the defensive speed of Chris Slade, Ted Johnson, and Ty Law. Stopped that play for no game. And they are really getting loud in New England. Second and ten. Draw play, Eddie George with lanes. George to the 30 and a first down. And that'll quiet him down in a minute. That'll Eddie George, a gain of 12. That'll give you an idea. This Oiler off offense, this Oiler team is, is a great road team. They played in Memphis last year, felt like they were on the road every weekend. Plus, the year before that, they were a lame duck season before the franchise moves from Houston. They are used to being in hostile environments. They are very, they are a very difficult group to rattle. Eddie George, 16 carries, 77 yards. First down from the 31. McNair, short drop underneath and it's caught. Jackie Harris, tackled by Ted Johnson. And don't forget, coming up after this game, second game of our doubleheader, Denver at Oakland, John Elway and company. All those interesting characters they have at the Coliseum are awaiting them. Denver is on a freight train this year and I think the Raiders are trying to blow up the tracks. Second down at seven from the 34. Crowd a big part of the game now. McNair changing the play. Sets up near side, wide check. Frank wide check, short of the 40 yard line. Tackled from behind by Law. Frank wide check played two seasons with the Washington Redskins, then came over to Tennessee. And for the last two years, he's been the leading receiver, the favorite target of Steve McNair. He was hurt, he's been hurt, he's had a bad foot, as, as you've heard in our opening, played pretty well, but now he comes off, he's limping a little bit, and they're working on his shoe right now. Out of the University of Maryland, third down and two. McNair, quick strike. No first down. Jackie Harris just couldn't advance the football. And the Oilers have to send it away. Forty-fourth consecutive sellout here in Foxborough. And back deep, Greg Hendrich at the 25. Away! High wobbly kick, Troy Brown, fair catch signal at the 15. 44-yard punt, no return, 156 to go, 13 apiece. Tennessee, New England tied at 13 apiece under two minutes to go in the third quarter. Gus Johnson along with Steve Tasker, the field goal kickers, playing a big role early. Adam Vinatieri and Aldo Greco both with two field goals. Eddie George with the touchdown. Robert Edwards with the touchdown. 
13 apiece. New England from the 16. Bledsoe pumping, and it's batted down at the line of scrimmage. Gary Walker got a big hand up there and redirected the football. The Oilers coming with five guys. They should have been picked up. Drew Bledsoe knew that, knew he had time to throw it. But watch right here. You'll see as his arm comes up. Just and it's amazing to me that this doesn't happen more often. But then again, Drew Bledsoe's six six two. He throws the ball out of there pretty high. That's uh, the land of the Giants in there. Walker, fourth year out of Auburn. They hand it off. Shaw. And he may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Lions on the play. Now next Saturday at noon Eastern on CBS Sports, it's a NASDAQ college football doubleheader. In the first game, Heisman hopeful Cade McNown leads UCLA against the Miami Hurricanes. And in the nightcap, Tim Couch challenges Steve Spurrier's attack when the Wildcats tangle with the Gators. And what a great football game. Seen here on CBS last night, Tennessee finally beating Florida down in Knoxville. Phil Fulmer has to be a happy man today. Bledsoe over the middle, caught, colors, changes directions, and colors gets up to the 22. Stopped by Denard Walker. Once again, the Oilers allowing them to complete the short pass, confident they can come up, make the tackle before they can make convert the first down. It's a basic premise that the, that the Patriots have not been able to counter. So Derek Mason back to Derek Mason to receive. Fourth round pick. Tom Tupa standing at the nine. Mason out of Michigan State from the 32. Turning it straight ahead up to the 45-yard line. And that's how they want return men to run the football when they catch it. Straight ahead. North-south. You're not going to get anywhere because the, the coverage moves so fast down the field. When you start to run sideways, they cover ground very fast. And there's no place else to go. Straight up. 43-yard punt, six-yard return for Derek Mason. Jeff Fisher's team here on the road, they are a great road football team and really have a benefit that Pete Carroll, head coach of the Patriots, wishes his team had. They were drawn together by all the road teams, had a real team unity, a real close-knit bunch because of all the adversity that they've been through. First down from the 45 for Tennessee. Eddie George on the counter, cuts it back. Here's Eddie, and Eddie George gets close to the New England 40-yard line. He picked up 13. Watch the big guys up front as Eddie George just picks up this yardage, picks his way along. This is when, at the point in the game when the running game is so important. You've just got to keep hammering on them, and a guy like Eddie George will make a three-yard gain, break a tackle, and make it into a 15-yard pickup. Nice blocks by Bruce Matthews, also Michael Rowe. And that is the end of the third quarter with the score. New England, Tennessee tied at 13. We'll return to Foxborough Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. And the scoring through three quarters, even all the way down. We begin the fourth quarter of play. Eddie George around the far side and nothing doing. Marty Moore with the tackle. Check that. Todd Collins with the tackle for New England. Played that exactly like an outside linebacker should. Let the play develop, slid to the outside. He's got the outside gap, got way outside, didn't let Eddie George go wide, and then made the play when Eddie broke down to make a cut. Excellent play by an outside linebacker. Lost one yard, second down and 11. From the New England 43. George, straight ahead, power running, inside the 40. And he gets to the 38. Eddie George, not only a Heisman Trophy winner, 1,000-yard rusher, pro bowler, but an actor as well. Do you think we can find it? Absolutely. Great, I have my agent cut you a chip. All right, man, thanks a lot. We'll see you, Leon. We'll call you as soon as we find anything. 
<laughs> That's Eddie on Nash Bridges with Don Johnson and Cheech Marin. He was the best guy in the scene. He was the best guy in there. <laughs> That's Friday night on CBS. He says, I don't like that acting stuff. It was just one thing I got a chance to do. Third down and seven. McNair dumps it. Steve McNair out of the backfield. He finds Rodney Thomas, and Thomas picks up the first down. And now let's go to New York. Jim Nance for an NFL Today update. Well, Gus, the Miami Dolphins, perhaps they're for real. That young defense shutting out Pittsburgh today. Third quarter, Cordell Stewart. He's only thrown for 25 yards. Picked off twice, and this one run back for a score by Zach Thomas. With five minutes to go in the third, Miami 21-0 back to you in New England. All right, Jim, tie score here, 13 apiece. Tennessee driving, draw play. Eddie George running straight ahead, and George, George. picks up about five. This game dead even on the scoreboard, and really it's, it's interesting because one of the things that makes these teams even is their ability to protect the football. But what about the job Steve McNair has been doing? Hadn't thrown an interception the entire season, and he has really been effective guiding this Oilers team. Not only has he been effective, he's been completing a lot of his passes, making short throws, and he hasn't thrown the dangerous pass. Second down and seven. George again slides through the hole, and he is crunched at the 25. Mark Wheeler caught him. But Eddie George delivered the blow on that play. You can see Eddie George getting up, nodding at the defender. That was a good hit. Okay, I can take that, but I'm still here. <laughs> you see the New England Patriots really platooning their people up front. All of their defensive linemen have seen a significant number of snaps today. That's a by design. Pete Carroll wants to keep them fresh because he knows in the fourth quarter that a running game will kill him if he doesn't have fresh big men in there to stop it. Brings up third down and five from the 25. And Steve McNair burns a timeout. 11.30 to go in the fourth quarter, tied at 13. Eleven thirty remaining in the fourth quarter. Tennessee, New England tied at 13 apiece. But the Oilers knocking on the door once again. They have the ball at the New England 25. This is the 10th play of the drive. Exactly where they want to be. 21 rushes, 26 passes. Pretty even at this point in the football game. McNair, quarterback draw, and he goes down. Willie McGinnis. No doubt about it, this was a cold quarterback draw. Willie McGinnis, really the only guy up front who's played about every snap for the defense, reads it. Nowhere to go. That play was sniffed out and stopped before it started by the New England Patriot defense. Henry Thomas also in on the play. So that brings on Al Del Greco to attempt a 45-yarder. And it is good. Del Greco remaining perfect. And Tennessee takes the 16-13 lead. Ten minutes, 54 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. And Al Del Greco gives Tennessee a 16-13 advantage. Don't forget, coming up next, Denver and Oakland. Colors from the five. Colors all the way up to the 33-yard line. A 28-yard return. Derek Colors leads the AFC in kickoff returns. 34.9 yards per return. That's a good one there. You can expect Drew Bledsoe to come out throwing the football around. I, I think they're going to get, at this point in the game, I think they're pretty much fed up with the run game and their lack of productivity. Even though they had a good run by Robert Edwards on the touchdown, Drew Bledsoe has obviously been the most effective weapon, and it's time for them to start using him and open him up. So the Patriots start from their own 32. Bledsoe, play action, caught Troy Brown, and Brown over the 35, up to the 37, where Blaine Bishop stops him. And here's a guy Drew Bledsoe really likes. 
Troy Brown, sixth year out of Marshall. They were actually drafted in the same draft class, and the first time Drew Bledsoe called home from training camp, he talked about Troy Brown and how good a player he was. You know, he's one of those guys, small guy, can't run, can't, you know, can't, isn't big, but yet here he is, and he's playing very well. Second down, four from the 38. Coates lines up at this, as the tight end on the near side. Handoff. Robert Edwards shot down at the 42. Blaine Bishop with the tackle. As much as we talked about balance on the side of the, the Tennessee Oilers, the New England Patriots have really tilted the scales toward the pass. And I think that's a, a tribute to Drew Bledsoe and his ability that, that they have done that. But Pete Carroll cannot be happy with that. They are not going to be able to consistently do the things they want to do offensively without a running game. They're going to have to find it somewhere. Pete Carroll, really, it, when he spoke to us, he laid it right at the feet of the offensive line. He really thought they were causing, having some leakage. Uh, he wanted them to play more physical up front. Look at the Jets responding as they are throttling Indianapolis today. And your team, former team, Buffalo, <laughs> beating St. Louis. Finally trying to get in the win column. Kansas City handing San Diego their first loss of the season. Not a good outing for Ryan Leaf. Last we heard, three interceptions. Charlie Batch, the starter for Detroit this week against Minnesota as he replaced Scott Mitchell. Third down and inches, Drew Bledsoe. 6'5", 233, leans forward and picks up the first down. Some quarterbacks can run the quarterback sneak, some of them can't. Drew Bledsoe can run it, and as we saw in week one of the season, Scott Mitchell getting fumbling on a quarterback sneak, you'd think it'd be the safest play in the world, but it does happen. And some, a lot of teams just refuse to run that play because of, the first of all, the value of the quarterback, plus the fact that some of them just can't run it. They don't have the knack. First down, play action, Bledsoe under pressure, and Bledsoe sacked from behind. Blaine Bishop, six year out of Ball State, Three consecutive Pro Bowls, and he caught him flat-footed. They've been bringing extra people all day. Drew Bledsoe saw it from his backside. You saw him flinch and cringe. He's kind of cringe right before Blaine Bishop makes this hit. They just brought too many people for the Patriots to block. And they, the thing about this Oiler defense is everybody gets a sack. The safeties get sacks. The linebackers get sacks. The defensive line gets sacks. The cornerbacks get sacks. Everybody gets a chance to rush. Everybody gets a chance to rush the passer sometime. Bledsoe sacked four times, hurried four times. Second down and a long 16. Bledsoe batted away, and Bledsoe goes up high to get it. Gary Walker, his second deflection of the day. Drew, Drew Bledsoe caught that ball himself, tried to catch it again, and he got thumped. He got absolutely crushed by Gary Walker. You'll see as the ball pops up into the air, and this is dangerous because the ball is up in the air, and it is up for grabs. That's a live ball. Bledsoe goes up and, and tries to catch it. And man, I'm telling you what, that's something you, as Pete Carroll on the offense of the Patriots, don't want Drew Bledsoe jump, going up for a rebound in the middle of a bunch of 350-pounders. So Bledsoe, third down, 16. Underneath, Glenn, and Glenn, he is whacked at the 45. Steve Jackson with the tackle. Cut him down quickly, and the Patriots have to punt. And once again, it, and the Patriots are willing to do that. They'll take that completion knowing that you don't complete third and 16s, and you don't complete third and over 15 yards. You just take it, get a little extra field position, give your punter a chance to put it out of bounds inside the 10. Tom Tupa standing at the 31. Derek Mason at the eight. Gone. Mason lets this one go into the end zone. Flags are on the play, though. One sitting at the 40-yard line. 54-yard punt for Tom Tupa. And this is against New England. They may decline this and take the football instead. That ball going into the end zone. It was an illegal man downfield, as you'll see. 
and they're going to decline that because they'll take the football. Ineligible member of the kicking team, number 99 downfield. The penalty is declined. First down. Vernon Crawford got down there too early. 7.47 to go here in the fourth quarter. Tennessee on offense after this. 7.45 remaining in the fourth quarter. Boilers lead the Patriots 16-13. And they have the ball first down and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Jackie Harris in motion. Here's Eddie George. Oilers staying on the ground. And Eddie George gets to the 22-yard line. Gus Johnson along with Steve Tasker and this Tennessee team with an opportunity to put this one away. And this is where the running game that they've They've had balance all day, but this is where the running game is huge. It runs out the clock, seven and a half minutes to go in this game. They need first downs, plus they need to come away with points would really be big. If even a field goal would force New England to score a touchdown to beat them. Jeff Fisher, he's got the balance that he was looking for coming into this game. Second down and nine from the 21. There's Wycheck. Here comes a blitz. Eddie George. And George gets to the 22. Gain of one. Ted Johnson smelled it out. And he came up and made the hit. Eddie George almost slipped just before he took the handoff from Steve McNair on a counter step. He'll step to his left. And then as he started to plan, come back to his right, he slipped. And it made them a little he hesitant on the handoff. And didn't he didn't get to the hole that he wanted to get to quite as quickly as he normally would have. But this is where Eddie George has really been a weapon. Receiving the ball out of the backfield. He's got three catches, 64 yards. He has 100 yards rushing on 23 carries. Third down and eight. And the play clock ran out. Oilers did not get it off in time. Offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. So they march it five yards back. Sixth penalty for Jeff Fisher's squad. 35 yards on the day. That makes it third down and a long 13th. And here come the fans. Out of the backfield, George on the screen, and it is... A great play by Teddy Bruschi. He tried to set up the screen. Bruschi refused to bite, and Tennessee has to punt it away. It's the same play they ran for a touchdown earlier in the game. Eddie George slipping out into the flat behind some offensive linemen. Teddy Bruschi was just there waiting for him, anticipated the play, and that's why he was thrown for a loss, and the Oilers have to give it back. Teddy Bruschi. Back up outside linebacker. Third year. Out of Arizona. Here's the punt off the side of Hendricks' foot. Troy Brown gets away from it. Takes a Tennessee bounce to the 40. So Bledsoe and the Patriots start with good field position. 5.07 to go. They're down by three. 5.08 remaining in the fourth quarter. Tennessee leading it 16-13. But New England with their best starting position of the game at the 45. And they run the football on first down and get and they get close to midfield. Robert Edwards with the carry. The ball was here at the 45 because the punt, it, you, you saw them down it near the 40, but it had inadvertently bounced up against the leg of one of the covering guys on the Oilers. And when that happens, that is where the ball is spotted. So now the ball at midfield. Second down and six for the Patriots. 435 and counting. Bledsoe, quick strike. Terry Glenn with running room. There he goes. Terry Glenn still on his feet. Terry Glenn, touchdown!
So Terry Glenn, a 51-yard touchdown from Drew Bledsoe. He's got four catches, 102 yards. Adam Vinatieri in to attempt the extra point. And it's good. Terry Glenn, a hero on the sidelines. That's the big play at Hurts, Tennessee, and New England goes up 2016. Well, Daryl Lewis guarding Terry Glenn. Off him and outside, Terry Glenn just turns inside, catches the football. There's nobody there. There's only three defensive backs in the back, in the defensive backfield. Everybody else was up to stop the run. They hit the quick slant. There's nobody to stop him. Watch here as he catches it. He's in a green field all by himself. Nobody touches him until he gets down to the 20. And that's Daryl. Quarterbacks love this. A short pass, great completion. He gets credit for a long touchdown pass. That counts just as much as a 65-yard bomb. And Terry Glenn, who set a rookie receiving record in 96 when he caught 90 balls, plagued by injuries last year, and has gotten off to a slow start this season. Only eight receptions for 96 yards. That's a big play, and the Patriots take the lead. So Adam Vinatieri sending it away for New England. Line drive kick. Into the end zone, and Derek Mason takes the knee. Oilers start from their own 20. Don't forget tonight on CBS, Premier Sunday, with 60 minutes and touched by an angel. Begins a new season, followed by the CBS Sunday movie, The Marriage Fool, starring Walter Matthau and Carol Burnett. All tonight on CBS, Premier Sunday. The big play coming from Terry Glenn. Four catches, 102 yards, the 51-yard touchdown. Now let's see if the Oilers can respond. They need to answer, and they really don't need to get in a hurry. They've got plenty of time. They're only down by four points. They need to just keep on keeping on. No need to change their game plan at all. Just play their offense. McNair rolls out across his body incomplete. Intended for Willie Davis. And he wanted pass interference. Well, that was a dangerous throw. Steve McNair throwing back across his body into the middle of the field. There's nothing, nothing there but trouble. You'll see Willie Clay breaking on the football, and he hits the receiver before the ball is there. The re referee, I think, believed that that ball was uncatchable. Willie Davis, or he could not have stopped and drawn back to catch that football before it was past him. So the total yards almost even, but New England with the lead. On second and ten, McNair. Intercepted! Lawyer Malloy! Touchdown! The first interception of the year for Steve McNair. And Lawyer Malloy runs it back 30 yards for a score. Bob Kraft, the owner, with his wife, Myra, took over this franchise when they were struggling. They've sold 44 consecutive games out, and now they have extended their lead against Tennessee. Extra point. Good. Lawyer Malloy, third year out of Washington. Steve McNair prides himself on taking care of the football. This play, this throw was right into the arms of Lawyer Malloy. There's, you'll see here from, from up top, this is, the dance is good. I like the dance. That, that's a team that's confident. You'll see here, Lawyer, right here, he'll just play center field, just stand back, and he's watching Steve McNair, everybody, you'll see him retreat, but he's just watching, he sees it, and just anticipates the throw. 
That's good play. That's good safety play. Let the receiver run past him because he knew Steve McNair wasn't even looking at him. And as he released the football, broke on the short route. Lawyer Malloy picks off Steve McNair. McNair throws his first interception of the year. And it's the first turnover of the season for the Oilers. And now things change for the Houston Oilers offense. Now they do. They, they have to, Tennessee Oilers have to do something different on offense. Now they are going to have to start throwing it around. Steve McNair has to shake that off to give his club a chance to come back and get in this football game. But now it's going to take a superhuman effort by this Tennessee team. Mason in the end zone, drops it, and takes the knee. So Steve McNair goes back onto the field. Up into then, just a very effective day for him. But he makes his first mistake of the season, and it costs the Oilers seven points. That's a very impressive, com uh, impressive completion ratio. I mean, he's completing almost all of his passes, and that last one was the first bad throw he has thrown, either on tape or in the game that I've watched him. It couldn't have come at a worse time for the Oilers, obviously, but with four minutes remaining, this game is still in doubt, even though they're down by 11. Lawyer Malloy with the interception. Great athlete, drafted to play baseball as well. McNair over the middle, and it's caught. Frank Wycheck at the 36. Willie Clay, Larry Wiggum on the play. 16-yard game. And the Oilers will not huddle up. They're going to hurry it up, and that's a good move. They've got to get the ball back twice and be successful both times. They can't, don't have the time to huddle up. Far side, Wycheck gets out of bounds and stops the clock. Larry Wiggum once again. Timeouts. The Oilers have two. The Patriots with three. And as a football team in the last, now with almost three and a half, with three and a half minutes to go, and you run the two-minute offense, when you, if you are able to score and get the ball back, it is draining. Running a two-minute offense for over two minutes for more than two minutes really takes it out of you. Second and seven. McNair out of the shotgun. Fires over the middle. And the ball is caught. This time it's Mason, who's the fifth receiver, making the catch a first down. And the Oilers quickly get to the line of scrimmage. This is a test for the offensive line of the Oilers. These guys aren't used to going play after play after play. The receivers, the running backs, those guys are in shape to do that. But the offensive linemen are used to going in quick bursts, and now it's going to test their endurance. 3.06 to go in the fourth quarter. McNair fading away, dumps it out of bounds, but there is a flag on the play. Deep in the defensive backfield, that flag was thrown. It looks like it may be defensive pass interference. McNair had to pull the ball back down, and when he does that, usually they'll give the defensive, the offensive receiver a chance because the reason the quarterback didn't throw was because the there receiver is no was being held. The, the quarterback was out of the pocket. There is no fall. Second down. And they got lucky. And that, that rule is that rule's thrown out the window when Steve McNair goes outside the tackles. They lose the they the receivers lose the protection of that no contact rule. 3-0-1 to go. Second down 10 from the 47 for Tennessee. Here comes a blitz. And McNair dumps it again. Larry Wiggum. Really close to Steve McNair, forced him to get rid of that one early. And as this drive wears on for the Oilers, you can see, you'll see the pressure start to get to them as the offensive line of the Oilers has been out there play after play after play. This is when the re rotation of the defensive line that they've been doing, the Patriots have been running guys in and out of there. Those guys are fresh. The offensive line doesn't have that luxury. They have to play every play. Third down and 10 from the 47. McNair under pressure, got it off. Jackie Harris with the catch, first down at the 39. Lawyer Malloy with the tackle, but it's a gain of 13. And the clock continues to run. Now McNair, first down, 
Quick drop to the far side. Harris with the catch. He gets out of bounds at the 35. That play is just like a gain of three, and then they take a timeout. That's the same play they ran on first down earlier in the series. That's just... That is just to get the ball out of bounds. Get the completion, get a couple of yards, and stop the clock. Gain four, second and six for the Oilers. 2.30 remaining in the fourth quarter. McNair. And what a hit by Chris Slade as he just wiped out. Rodney Thomas, and he's still down. He's not going to get up. Not for a minute. You'll see here Rodney Thomas will just go out here and catch this football after he's an outlet for McNair. McNair's trying to throw down the field, but Chris Slade sees it, reads it, times it perfectly. Puts him on his back inbounds as well. So the clock kept running, and since this is outside two minutes. That, if it was inside two minutes, that would have cost the Oilers a timeout, but it didn't because there's two minutes and 15 seconds left. And Thomas, fourth year out of Texas A&M, Eddie George's backup is still down on the far sideline. Both Pete Carroll and Jeff Fisher concerned with Rodney Thomas. Chris Slade timing that hit absolutely perfectly. And the, the thing about it for the Patriots is that that was, play was stopped inbounds. And now, since it was such a good hit, the clock stopped anyway. Another look time. at the play. You see Chris Slade drop back and just shuffle out, sees McNair go late to Thomas. The helmet goes right into the numbers along with the right on top of the football. And there's just no room for any air in there when that happens. Six tackles today for Chris Slade. The pro bowler in his sixth year out of the University of Virginia. Has been nursing a sore knee and they thought maybe they would, they would rotate him in and out. And Teddy Bruschi has been in for him. Marty Moore has been in for him. But here in crunch time, you put the pro bowler in whether he's got a sore knee or not. Hopefully he got enough rest during the early quarters to be effective in the fourth quarter. And on that play, I think it all worked out for the, for the best for the Patriots. And Rodney Thomas gets up. He took a heck of a shot. And a good sign. He walks to the sidelines on his own. A nasty, nasty game. That's a long walk when you when you don't feel like jogging off and you have to walk. That seems to take forever to get off the football field after you've been down, no matter where you end up. So the Oilers, with the ball at the New England 35, still have two timeouts left. Third down, six yards to go. Three receivers set up for Tennessee. Setting up the screen, Wycheck in the open field, tackled at the 31 by Teddy Bruschi, and the clock continues to run as we approach the two-minute warning. Two minutes to go in the fourth quarter, Tennessee in a hole. Patriots lead at 27-16, two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Last chance to dance for Tennessee. They've got it fourth down and three from the 32. McNair, quarterback draw, picks up the first down. Willie McGinnis with the tackle. And the drive continues for the Oilers. They are in four down territory, obviously, from now on. Steve McNair just taking it upon himself to go. That was a call and design play. McNair passing on first down, near side, and it's picked up again. This time, Ty Law still running. Ty Law looking for a block. Gets outside. And Ty Law out of bounds, and that's your ball game. 
He had two interceptions last week, picks up one today, and New England, a pick off Steve McNair twice today. You'll see here Steve McNair throws it out. A miscommunication, no question about it, he caught that football. He caught that football. The receiver was inside. Steve McNair threw it outside, and that turns into an interception, especially at this point in the football game when the Patriots know that he's going to do nothing but drop back and throw that football with less than two minutes to go, down by 11. And Carroll knows it, and he's excited about it. That's, that's a load off his mind right there. 1.26 remaining. And the Patriots running it. Robert Edwards, big opening, gets to the 40, make it the 41. Clock continues to run. Now they want a timeout. Steve McNair, who prides himself on being able to hold on to the football, not turn it over, throws two interceptions today. The first two turnovers, not only for McNair, but for Tennessee this season. You see the... You see the running game for the Patriots cracking off six yards on first down. That's a, against a demoralized Oiler defense. You see what they have next coming up, the New England Patriots. Tough game at Kansas City. New Orleans playing extremely well. And then three division games at the end of this stretch. The New England Patriots and their fans are going to know exactly what kind of team they're going to turn out to be this year. Edwards again with a big hole. Robert Edwards, a foot race. Robert Edwards dragged out of bounds inside the 10. So the rookie with the big run. And that's what they want to see here in New England to forget about Curtis Martin. What happens, These the Oilers jump on the line of scrimmage and if the running back can find a crease and pop through, there's nobody left except Daryl Lewis, who just has to run, try and catch him, flag him down. Pete Carroll almost kept up with him on that run, trying to keep up on the outside. He did cheer louder, I think, though. 52-yard run for Robert Edwards. And with 1.08 to go, New England inside the 10. Drew Bledsoe takes the knee as they show a lot of class, not running up the score on Tennessee. You see here some of the... The hardcore Patriot fans booing that. They want to see more points, but you know what? That's a good move by the Patriots. You never know who you're going to see down the road, especially in the playoffs. And if they can give the Oilers some motivation by rubbing their noses in a, in a game in which the Oilers played extremely well, uh, they're going to try not to do that. And this running the clock out here with now with 35 seconds left in the game. It's an excellent play by the Patriots. Just take the win. Don't do anything that's, that's going to make a statement about how you feel about the other team. Bledsoe taking a knee once again. That's the final play. Drew Bledsoe, when the Patriots needed offense, he went to work. Finding his number one wide receiver, Terry Glenn. He told us he wanted, as we said in the open, he wanted to leave a long-lasting memory in the, in the heads of the Oilers about what it is to play here in New England against this team. The Oilers hanging tough through three and three quarters of a game. Three quarters and plus most of the fourth quarter. Breaking loose here in the last part of the fourth quarter to get a couple of big plays and put this game away early. Coming up on the NFL Today postgame show, join Jim Nance, Marcus Allen, Brent Jones, and George Seifert for all the scores and highlights and the latest NFL news. Also, Denver and Oakland, the second game of our doubleheader, coming up next. We'll join Jim Nance right after this.